What is the purpose of this new tax and what companies are going to be mostly affected? It's fascinating. This is all coming out in the so-called manifesto of the Conservative Party. We're running up to the general election June the 8th, which the Conservative Party are due to win by really quite some margin. And they've come out today with part of this manifesto proposing a law to allow the government to impose levy on what they call social media and communication service providers. Now, they don't name particular companies. They don't say how big these levies, these taxes could be, but they notably say that will support the awareness and preventative activity to counter internet harms. Basically, they're saying, look, some people think the government shouldn't regulate on this. We disagree. The government should be regulating these sorts of technology movements and the internet. And of course, this comes hot on the heels of the WannaCry ransomware attack, which really took down a lot of the hospitals, the big infrastructure in the UK. This is striking why the iron is hot. This is something the public wants to hear. They want to see some sort of fight back and protection for those who use the internet, particularly children and particularly against hate speech and fake news. Is this something that could set a precedent for other countries? I think this will be fascinating because, yes, it can. Already, though, this is something we're seeing spread across EU-wide. I mean, we just this week saw France levy fines itself. They said they're going to be hitting a maximum privacy fine coming up Facebook's way. This is to do with data protection issues. We've had Germany, remember, bringing itself towards its own election in September. Merkel's party, the leader of Germany, are also considering what would be the strictest laws ever imposed against social media giants, such as Facebook, they're considering imposing fines of 50 million per pop if ever you saw Facebook refusing to take down certain content or not being able to hear or see options to complain for those who use the likes of Facebook and other social media giants. So this is something ringing out across the EU, Emily. And interestingly, of course, we just got Facebook being fined 110 million euros by the EU today. Why? Because they say, look, you gave us missing, well, incorrect, factually incorrect data back in 2014 when you were looking to buy WhatsApp because you said you couldn't merge the data between WhatsApp and your other platforms, and you did back in August. Right. They did say, though, that it wouldn't have changed approval of the deal. So I wonder if it's a bit more of a slap on the wrist. David, mm. you know, what do you think? The EU has obviously taken a very aggressive stance towards these technology companies. Is the law the best way to handle big issues like hate speech, like privacy? Well, that's such a big question. I mean, I think informed law enforcement would be very beneficial in the era of the Internet. But we have to be very careful given the degree to which these companies are defining the future economy and beloved in many respects by the citizens of every country. And, you know, if they get impaired, they're not, the citizens aren't going to be happy, which is why governments want to show that they're concerned about privacy, but they don't want to come down too hard on these people. On the other hand, from Facebook's point of view, when its profits this year are going to be somewhere in the vicinity of $12 billion, it's not going to, you know, really hurt them too badly. But... I think, you know, Carolyn's right. This could very well be the beginning of an era of kind of, kind of a death, not death, but harm by a thousand cuts. As governments all over the world feel, they've got to show that they recognize the weight that these companies have acquired in society, and they feel like they've got to do something, quote unquote. But I'm not sure that governments generally know what to do because they don't really understand how these systems work, and there aren't really good alternatives to the way they're working now in many cases. And David, I'm fascinated by your opinion, sat on the other side of the Atlantic, as to what really the EU is doing about some of these tech giants. Because as you say, they are such valuable companies now, Apple still dominating, Facebook um, up amongst them. And we are seeing 30 bi 13 billion being issued Apple's direction in terms of back taxes. You're seeing Google not with one, not with two, but with three investigations coming from the EU. Do you, does the tech community in the US see this as heavy handed from the European Union or think game on? Yes, definitely. Definitely it is seen in the U.S. by me and by the industry generally as quite heavy-handed. Um, but, you know, there is a flip side to that. In my opinion, at least in the EU, we've had a consistent pattern for the last couple of years of the government, the EU government, and it's, it's many quite tech-savvy areas, you know, 
trying to understand what, like I said before, the problem is these businesses ha have a weight that no companies have ever had in society. They have numbers of cl clients and customers that no companies have ever had on a global scale. So how you deal with that is extremely problematic. In the US, we've had an incredibly laissez-faire attitude. And I think it's probably healthy. The Europeans are looking at it, but I don't think that fining them for little privacy things is going to accomplish anything.